Welcome fabricators. Okay, we've got some big announcements that happened this week that all have to do with how we secure our Microsoft Fabric workspace and how we can access secure resources. And we're going to cover all that next on Tales from the Field. Hey, wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's big week fabricators, right? So, first we're going to start with what we have what works, what functionality we can expect in the future. Uh, quick reminder, if this is your first time finding your way over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, we have our MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we feature content from the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits. That's a video where we are inspired by you, the community, working with the product group, maybe some announcements like we're covering right now. All right, so let's kick this off. We're gonna start with workspace identities. So what is a workspace identity? We've covered this in other videos managed identities. Well, that's exactly what a workspace identity is. It's a managed identity for your fabric workspace. And what this is going to allow us to do is to be able to use it for authentication. So how do we permission this? Well, I'm over in my Microsoft fabric workspace and I just go to the workspace settings and you can see there's my workspace identity. All I have to do is click on workspace identity and it's going to create it for me. Now, this is a full fledged Azure Active Directory intra ID ID that we can use to be able to negotiate the communication between our service and another service. So what can we do today? We can go into our Azure storage and we can select a trusted resource type. So that way we can make sure that we've restricted our connections. Today, you can see that we have the options of selecting all the workspaces in our current tenant, in our current subscription, or in a specific resource group that relates to the fabric capacity we've provisioned. Well, in the future, we're gonna have the capability to put that workspace identity in there so we can have a specific workspace that connects to a specific storage account. But keep in mind, this is a prime time 100% intra ID, and we can use this in the future to be able to connect to other resources. As a matter of fact, today, I can go over into SQL Server and I can take this manage identity and I can run a command to add it to my Layham 23 database. I can add it as an external provider. I can give it data reader and data writer capabilities. All that functionality is there. We're not gonna see that just yet. Right now in data pipelines, for example, if we were doing an import, we're still limited to the options that we have, but in the preview blog, it said that we're gonna see this. Remember, we're in preview, so this is gonna roll out over time. Now, up next, we've got a big one, a, a massive one, absolutely huge. This is manage private endpoints. Hang with me on this one, because what we need to cover is why this matters, some current limitations, and then also how we set this up. So first off, why this matters? Well, if we're using Spark, and there's a lot of people out there using Spark, what we're going to do is this allows us to be able to make those connections from our Spark clusters uh, over to the private endpoints. And it's going to be for the entire Spark environment. Keep in mind, this is not going to work for your uh, default pools. This is going to be specifically a provision pool that we've got to be able to utilize. So your startup time is going to take a little bit longer but we'll be able to go to the private endpoints that we have in storage, in Azure SQL databases, anything, any service that we've got with a private endpoint. So we go over to our Fabric Workspace and now we're in network security. We click create and we need to create our managed private endpoint. So let's go over to our Azure Blob storage account. Uh, this is my storage account that we used in a previous video with a VNet. I'm gonna go to networking real quick so you can see I've got a private endpoint connection here. It's already in place. Now, what we need to do is within the storage account, um, we need to make sure that we select the endpoints and we need specifically the storage account resource ID. We're gonna click copy and that's what I'm gonna need to create this. So I come over to my manage private endpoint. I put in the name, I put in the information for the resource identifier, and then I select Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Now, a quick reminder, in order to be able to use this functionality, you have to be in a region um, that has regional fabric support. And also this only works for F SKUs, not P SKUs. If you don't have a region covered under regional availability and support, then you're gonna see this error. So if you come into this workspace and you see this, you might not have access to this right away. Okay, fabricators, we've got all the documentation you need in the description of the video. 
uh, fabric regional availability, things of that nature, how-to guides, all this great information that we've covered. So sound off. Uh, is this helpful? Uh, any questions you have, any, anything you don't understand, anything that we could clear up, we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. Uh, have a great day and be good to one another. Wake up. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.